Do you have a date for Fujinami to make his Cactus League debut? We do, yes. Um, Fuji will make his debut against the Angels on the uh, 28th. And uh, <clears throat> I know you all have been waiting for that. And I, I don't really think Nev officially announced that it was going to be Fujinami, but someone told me that it was going to be Otani Fujinami yesterday. So it's official on my end that Fujinami will throw um, on the 28th. Did that play, I mean, I think Nev said yesterday that Otani would go on. Did that play into your guys' timeline at all? Not at all, no. That's Fuji's day. It just so happens to coincide with the day that Otani's pitching. And um, I'm sure there'll be a lot of excitement about seeing these two. I think it's been a long time since they've been on the same field together. And uh, outside of uh, <clears throat> it being spring training, it's still should be exciting. I wouldn't see Fuji going any more than that. Um, you know, as we start this thing out, it's pretty scripted in terms of uh, pitch count and building guys up. I think first time out, it's the goal is to get them around 35 pitches and continue to build from there. How will you guys, uh, because there are so many starters and there are a lot of guys you're trying to work at, um, how will you maybe structure that um, just so that you're seeing? Yeah, at, at the beginning they're going to piggyback each other, so most likely you'll get to see guys that are <clears throat> in line to uh, be starting pitchers this season. And uh, behind that it'll just be a mix of guys. Cox, do you have a s Sunday and Monday lineup already to announce pitching-wise, starting those games? Um, we talked, so... You want all four days, so Saturday is the first game. I think I mentioned Sears and Tarnock. Sunday, Aller and Muller, I believe. And you really hit me on Monday. I mean, I don't have photographic memory. I'd have to pick up my phone and look at the schedule. <laughs> Coach, can you talk about the move just this week with the hat net and coming back to spring training now having one year under your belt as a head coach and what have you seen? Well, I mean, as you talked about, it's just one week of spring training. We've had five <clears throat> full days with the pitchers and catchers, which I thought I, I mentioned it went well. There was a lot of energy, and we mixed in some some fun things for them to do. The last few days, yesterday was a challenging day, but uh, for from my standpoint, um, you know, it's always difficult when you present outside you know, factors that uh, challenge you, which was weather yesterday, and uh, we, we took uh, yesterday in stride. I thought it was a great work day. Uh, still a lot of focus and concentration on what we were getting done. I think the guys were happy about it. Um, so you know, we got two days left of this, and once we get through this and games start, and I think that's when you know, you'll see it, uh, a joy from the players that the uh, the heavy lifting's done and they get to go out and perform. Can you talk about the addition of J.J. Boulay and what you think he'll be able to bring? Yeah, for, for J.J., you know, um, anytime a young player gets traded, it's, you know, the biggest thing for me is to get them as comfortable with the organization and, um, you know, with his teammates. And, and, you know, I think for him, you know, spring training, um, you know, he's made some adjustments in his swing. We're going to get to go watch him play every day, which we haven't had that opportunity. So... Um, you know, the hopes are, are high for J.J., um, and, uh, and we're excited for his opportunity that lies ahead of him in this organization. I apologize if you've answered this before. That's okay, Ken. Is, is Manny Pena full go after the uh, wrist last year? Or he's... He is. Um, you know, this was an early on question that uh, we got with Manny in terms of, uh, you know, how much he's going to be playing this spring training. And uh, for Manny, he came here you know, for past, or, you know, didn't choose to go to the WBC. Could have represented his country um, for the for the simple fact that he wanted an opportunity to, to get here to play, to start playing, uh, to learn the pitching staff, and uh, so I admire that. And yeah, Manny, Manny will be a full go. Jordan Diaz is going with the Columbia. He's playing for them. Yep. Do you have input with these teams, whether you know where he might be playing, or is that important to kind of get a feel for? How that's going to go when a guy goes down there to play in the WBC? No, no, that wouldn't be that wouldn't be right in my opinion to, to tell a manager what he needs to do with a particular player. They, they put those rosters together, they constructed them 
you know, a month ago or longer. And I'm sure, uh, you know, Jordan um, having the success that he had in the Caribbean series um, will be a big part of that Colombian team. Um, you know, we're going to do our best to, to get him ready, which if you know Jordan, he just finished the Caribbean series, which I think ended as late as the February first week of February. So he came here with, you know, a ton of games played. So I don't think he's a guy that I identify as needing to get ready, um, as opposed to a Zach Geloff, uh, Denzel Clark on some other rosters that, you know, haven't played. Um, and and we're going to try to do our best to get them as many chances and as many live at bats as possible before they leave. Mark, with so many new faces. Four games get going. Is there a player or two that really kind of catches your curiosity the most? And, and, you know, before things get going. I think you know, it's it's difficult to, when you assess just workouts and get excited about them. Um, you know, I think you know in terms of the new guys that have uh, come to this organization that I'm not familiar with. Um, yeah, there's an excitement about watching them play, uh, but um, you know, in terms of workouts and just. Watch him take BP or, you know, live BP. I never judge a live BP session because pitchers are always going to be ahead of the hitters. So uh, I'm, I'm more so, you know, looking forward to Saturday and, and once we start playing games and and uh, and getting to lay my eyes on, on on all the guys that we've acquired this off season. With so many new pieces, how do you prioritize getting to look at all of them and, and knowing which one fits back with as well with your roster? Uh, I, th I think you identify, <clears throat> you know, guys that have a real opportunity to, to impact this ball club, um, you know, and yet for me, my biggest message last year was that uh, I wanted to get to know as many players in this organization as possible um, that have a future, uh, you know, in this organization to have impact at the major league level, which uh, you know, everyone here in camp has that opportunity and, and um, you know, I think they wouldn't be in camp without a direction towards the big leagues, so uh, you know, identifying the guys that are going to get the, the bulk of the playing time, um, and, and you know, looking at the, the future as best you can to project that. Um, but everyone will get you know an equal, as much of an equal chance to go out and, and get abs and get prepared for this season as well. A season player, a season of the athletics, Tony Campbell. Just what does he mean to? this organization, what he's brought also back to the community. Yeah, Tony's great. Um, you know, Tony plays with this uh, energy and life and enthusiasm uh, for the game. He truly cares about his teammates. And last year, Tony's start to the season, I think, was uh, Tony putting a lot of pressure on himself to be that guy. And he finally recognized, I think, at the second half that he just need to be Tony. And, uh, and that's good enough. And so, uh, impressed with the way Tony finished his year and looking forward to uh, to him starting this year and, and bringing that leadership presence um, to this club. Uh, like you said, he's been here, um, I don't think he's the longest tenured A, but from a position player standpoint, he, he might be. Now speaking of the city of Oakland, I know you probably have asked this before, or have been asked before, but what, it, what is, makes just being in Oakland so special, maybe versus going to another city? Yeah. I, Oakland is, you know, a city that um, we've established our heritage in, um, and I think the, the identifiable theme is that we're grinders, that we go out and compete regardless of the circumstance, um, you know, that uh, the city and the fan support is loyal, uh, regardless of, of the numbers in the stands. You know, Townie always tells me that the uh, the webcast that he does is, you know, he hit a million followers. So, you know, the history of this organization, the legacy that's been left by the guys in front of us, it's our job to continue that forward. And, and, and we're all proud, you know, to be Oakland Athletics. Do you have a rough idea of how much uh, shortstop Lemus Diaz play? Yeah, I think, you know, Lemus will play, play shortstop. Um, we're going to get him there in spring. He hasn't, you know, played a ton of games there. Um, obviously, that's due to the players on the roster in, in Houston, you know, um, Carlos Correa and, and, and the young kid Pena. But, um, you know, for us, you know, getting in there, getting in a third, getting in a second, those are all priority positions. Um, probably limit the outfield exposure. But, um, 
you know, and then assessing how we look and look into our roster and and, uh, and where you know he'll get the most playing time is going to be something we continually look at as spring goes on. That's that's the goal, I think, Matt, is to get him, you know, enough time at each position so when he gets to the end of the season that he's uh, had that exposure and, and feels comfortable. Uh, yesterday when you said that uh, the all our live EP the other day was the best thing he's looked here. Um, do you mean since he got here? Like he, he looked, yeah, I think he looked just relaxed. He looks more relaxed. Um, and as I talked about this a lot, you know, guys that come into new organizations try to obviously make a big impression. Um, you know, there's a lot of anxiety about, you know, trying to fit in and performance. You know, Aller did have games last year where he flashed, you know, really, really good stuff, um, command and, and life to the fastball. And he just struggled with consistency. And yesterday, in his or so yesterday, the day before, in his live VP, he looked consistent with everything. Mark, does, does the makeup of the team change maybe the way you might have had expectations on someone like Tyler so he was so strong and just some of the things that lie ahead for him this season? Well, Tyler's a young player, and he hasn't played really consistently above double A. He got some exposure to double A at the end of the season, he got a few games at triple A. So, um, you know, he's on the right path and uh, he, you know, his progress is, is continuing to move him forward at each level. I think it's, it's been great to see him mature, not, not just physically, but, but uh, mentally as well. And I think Tyler's in a, in a great spot right now. He's on the right track. And, uh, you know, we look forward to, yeah, to his future in this organization for sure. So, question. Have you only seen him catch out here so far? Yeah, the majority of Tyler's work will be behind the plate in spring training here. Um, you know, he has played first base and feels really comfortable. I think Bobby Crosby um, you know, has mentioned that he's, he's an you know, average or above average first baseman. So, um, you know, at this point right now, I want to see him behind the plate here in camp. And uh, there'll be a, if there is an opportunity to put him at first, it would be very limited. Trevor May is an experienced pitcher who brings winning for both Minnesota and New York. How important is he with two young catchers uh, and a young pitching staff as well to help get them back to winning ways? Yeah, I think you know for the young pitching staff, and when you mentioned winning ways, I think you want to say, you know, educating them on on just how to be successful at the major league level, which um, you know we've had guys in that bullpen that have been that. Um, before Trevor's coming here, as you talked about, with uh, eight years of experience under his belt, obviously being a part of the Mets club last year, there's you know history in his career of winning, and uh, all those factors are, are really important, and uh, and we will um, you know, lean on him for for that guidance and and, and that leadership. Um, you know, Trevor, uh, um, for us, as you talked about. Um, I think it will be great for these young guys, and they just need to utilize it as well. Talk to Kyle Muller a little bit. He says he feels really good, but he also said he really likes the dynamic of having a lot of younger guys that are also trying to kind of cut their teeth earlier, early in their careers, if you will. Is that something you like about this club as well, the dynamic there? Is, do you sort of notice that? Yeah, I think with young guys, yes, it's more comfortable for them to be surrounded by peers of, of the same age or the same experience level, um, you know, and if you can find a few guys that, that come through the system together, if you think back, you know, Mulder, Hudson, Zito, young guys, uh, there, there is something about a group of guys coming in together and feeding off one another and competing against one another to be the best or to be the ace. and. We have some names um, and some guys um, that uh, you could see assimilating to each other and, and taking that um, situation they're in and, and rising in that way. That would be great. I'm just looking at Muller specifically, what do you feel like he kind of brings to this, this rotation? Do you feel like he can sort of break in early? Or is, is it well, he's got to make the rotation and right. earn yeah. that spot. Um, you know, but I think he has all the ability. He's uh, had success at AAA level um, for a period, a long period of time, 
and uh, now it's time for him to uh, to go out and, and and really capture this opportunity here that he has to make this rotation and and be an impact starter for us. Um, you know, he's uh, like I said, he's got all the tools, and now it's about going out and performing and getting outs at the major league level. Thanks, Scott.